All right, we're going to be going over charging the batteries using the inverter via the Mate 3S. For Gen 1s, you're going to want to take your 0116 cable, bypassing the monster cable assembly. That way, the Mate 3S doesn't restart on you while you're going through this process. For anything with the spree, you're going to want to remove the purple wire from the X24 digital outputs, and that's going to prevent that from happening as well. A couple things to check here. You're going to want to verify that you are getting good grid voltage, and then this is also going to give you your battery voltage. My system has been um, turned on for well over five minutes, so it's already established that connection with the grid. If you just powered up your unit, you're going to need to wait that 300 second countdown before um, you can start using grid power for battery charging. So from here, we want to log in as an installer by pressing the lock button. The installer password is 0311. To navigate there, we can either press up or the center button of the dial, enter. Um, and then we use the dial to input the proper um, number and enter will keep pushing us forward. This gets us into the main menu. We want to go into settings, inverter and AC input and current limit parameters. Um, so here we're gonna want to tell the inverter that for battery charging, we can use something greater than zero amps. So we um, scroll down there with the dial, hit enter once we get there, and it's gonna highlight that uh, field, and we can increase it. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with 10 amps. This is telling the inverter that it can use 10 amps for battery charging. This is 10 amps from the grid, so 10 amps AC. Um, we're going to want to hit enter. And now there are a few other things to check. It's showing us here that charge controller is off, so we're going to want to turn that on. Um, but we're also getting this flashing AC input. We're going to want to look at things in there. Um, it says AC mode drop, so we're going to want to hit use. And then now we can go to charger and check the charger mode and since that's off we want to turn that on and back out of there and we can start a bulk charge so we're going to want to hit bulk charge and start bulk and if you still don't see anything use, um, uh, going on um, you're going to want to check the inverter status so we want to go to inverter and it's showing us that it's off so once we hear once we hit the on button um, you should hear a relay click and it should start to initiate a battery charge. And now it's giving us how many kilowatts it's using for battery charging. So um, I recommend using the, uh, leaving it for a while to get that battery voltage up to something healthy enough that's gonna allow you to um, work through the unit to, to run all your diagnostic checks. Um, and you can see that it's using 2.4 kilowatts and it corresponds with the amperage that we're allowing the charger to use in the inverter settings and AC input and current limits. So if we were to increase this number then it'll increase the amount of kilowatts or amperage it's going to be using from the grid for battery charging. Hit enter, go back to the inverter page and we can see that corresponding number there. Um, yeah, so that's how to charge batteries from the grid. So once you get the batteries up to an acceptable voltage, you can simply disconnect your 0116 or 117 cable and put it right back into the access port and resume normal operation. But I like to go back and um, basically shut down that charger by going back into the settings, inverter, AC input and current limits, and bringing that back down to zero. That way... Um, that way the unit doesn't start in a under a heavy load. Hit there and that should stop the battery charging. And you can even go ahead, go as far as just turning off the inverter, disconnecting your cable and plugging that back in. And once it resumes the communication um, between the inverter and Spree or PLC, then um, you'll resume normal operation and you'll be good to go.